This is the story of the Arabic tablet of Ahmad. Ahmad was born in the city of Yazd in 1805 to one of the ruling families of that city. In his mid-teens, he began showing great interest in things mystical. And in answer to his questions, was told by some that there were teachers who knew special prayers and rituals that could reveal to him the promised Kaim. This was not the kind of aspiration that Ahmad's family had in mind for him, and they tried to discourage his habits of long prayers and periods of fasting and seclusion. One day, he left with a small bundle, as if going to the public bath, but instead set out on his quest to find the holy ones who could teach him the special prayers and ablutions necessary to behold the Kaim. He traveled throughout Persia, stopping to sit at the feet of every spiritual teacher he could find, trying every prescribed method with complete sincerity and care. His search unfulfilled and incomplete, he made his way to India and tried the methods of the mystics and seers there painstakingly following every instruction and ritual, and still no near to his goal, he finally returned to Persia and settled in Kashan, where he married, had children, and established a successful cloth-making business. But the heat of spiritual search remained in his heart. Some years later, when the rumors began to circulate, about the one who claimed to be the promised Kaim, Ahmad tried to find out all he could. But no one had any information at all until he inquired from a traveler passing through Kashan. The stranger told him that there was a mullah in the city of Mashhad in the province of Khurasan who could tell him what he wished to know. Ahmad immediately closed his shop and set out the next day on foot across deserts and mountains until he reached the city of Mashhad, exhausted and ill. As soon as he was well enough, he went straight to the mullah's door. When he explained to the mullah the story of his searching and his longing to be told the truth about the one claiming to be the Kaim, the mullah threw Ahmad out on the street, telling him not to say such things here. Though heartbroken and confused, the next day he went back, and when the mullah appeared at the door said, I will not go away. I will not leave until you tell me the whole truth. The mullah was convinced of Ahmad's sincerity and set in motion the means by which Ahmad was given the message of the promised one, the Bab, and his teachings. The fuel of his search was ignited by the spark of truth, and Ahmad was ablaze. Elated and full of joy, he set out for his home in Kashan with the instructions not to disclose his new faith to anyone, for these were days of extreme danger to the followers of the new faith. He became aware of another believer in his city, and the two became close companions. One day his friend came to Ahmad and told him that the beloved Kaim, the Bab, was to pass through Kashan, and he had arranged with the guards to have him stay at his home. Ahmad was able to behold the face and sit in the presence of the Promised One, watching and listening to him respond to the questions and challenges of the local clergy. After the Bab's stay, Others in Kashan accepted the new faith. The divines of the city began to incite mob violence against the new believers, and Ahmad sent his family to safety in Tehran. He himself was forced to hide in a tower for 40 days until he finally decided to set out for Baghdad, which had become a gathering place for many Babis. Upon his arrival, he immediately understood why. For there he attained the presence of Baha'u'llah, the blessed beauty. He who would soon announce himself to be him whom God shall make manifest, the universal manifestation, 
whose advent the Bab had proclaimed was the central purpose of his revelation. When the Caliph's decree calling Baha'u'llah to Istanbul was announced, Ahmad begged Baha'u'llah to be able to accompany him on his journey. But Baha'u'llah told him that he must stay in Baghdad with the other loyal believers, that those he was taking with him were those who were not trustworthy or might instigate trouble. And so after all the years of longing and search, and his ultimate joy of attaining the presence of the manifestation of God, Ahmad was separated from his heart's desire. Obediently, Ahmad served the friends in Baghdad, gathering them together and inspiring them to go out and teach the faith of Baha'u'llah. But after a few years, he could not bear to be separated any longer from his beloved and set out on foot for Adrianople, where Baha'u'llah was being held. Upon reaching Istanbul, he received a tablet from Baha'u'llah. Reading it, he turned his steps away from the direction of his beloved and set out instead for Persia to bring to the Babis the glad tidings of the appearance of him whom God shall make manifest. Never again would he behold the face of his beloved in this life. Such was his fearlessness that he traveled throughout Iran, undauntingly facing the fierce persecutions of the divines, teaching the Baha'i faith wherever he went, until he passed on to his beloved in 1905 at the age of 100. The tablet Ahmad received in Istanbul was this tablet of Ahmad. He is the King, the All-Knowing, the Wise. Lord, the Nightingale of Paradise singeth upon the tweed of the tree of eternity Informing the severed ones of the message which hath been revealed by God, the King, the Glory.
that most great beauty foretold in the books of the messengers through whom truth shall be distinguished from error and the wisdom of every command shall be tested verily he is the tree of life that bringeth forth the fruits of god the exalted the power
is my soul They are not And never Distress and banishment in this remote prison. And be thou so steadfast in my love that thy heart shall not waver, even if the swords of the enemy. Rain blows upon thee, and all the heavens and the earth arise against thee. Affliction in my path, or degradation for my sake. Be not thou troubled thereby. Rely upon God, thy God, and the Lord of thy. People are wandering in the paths of delusion, bereft of discernment to see God with their own eyes or hear His melody with their own ears. Thus have we found them, as thou also dost witness. Thus have their superstitions become veils between them and their own hearts, and kept them from the path of God, the exalted, the great. Thou assured in thyself that verily he who turns away from this beauty hath also turned away from the messengers of the past. And showeth pride towards God from all eternity to all eternity.
The Lord 